The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, welcome to Element 14 Presents. I'm Cisco, and in today's episode, we're going to go over the process of building a little do-it-yourself rover and focusing on the Python programming that we're going to need for moving the robot around. As usual, we'll go over the hardware assembly process and then move on to the software that we'll need to control the robot. We'll see how to use Python to control the motors and also how to use HTML and JavaScript to build a graphical user interface that will allow us to drive the robot around using our mobile phones. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. For this video, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4 and a pre-flash SD card running the Raspbian operating system. I'll also use a Raspberry Pi motor hat and a robotics kit that includes a laser cut chassis, a couple of DC motors and their respective mounting brackets, two 47 millimeter rubber wheels and a caster wheel, and all the assembly hardware that's needed to put everything together. For power, I'll also add a couple of USB batteries that we typically use for charging our mobile devices. I'll start by adding some standoffs to the Raspberry Pi so that I can more easily mount it on the chassis. I'll put into the Raspberry Pi my pre-flash SD card. Next, I'll connect the motor hat. One change I did was reworking the original chassis of the SDS Pi robot. I wanted to use two batteries instead of one so that I can run it for a little bit longer. I'll leave a link to download these files in the Element 14 community page for the project. No matter what your choice is, we can now mount the Raspberry Pi onto the chassis. Then we can mount the motor brackets and the DC motors themselves, and also place the wheels onto the motor shaft. We can then mount the caster wheel to the front, and then connect the motors to the motor hat. Keep in mind the polarity of the motors, and also take note of the motor channels where you're placing the wires on the motor hat. The chassis I design allows me to mount an ultrasonic sensor to the front, but this is an optional step for this project. The last thing I'll need is to mount the batteries that I'll need to power the robot. This simply requires a few screws on the bottom, putting the wing tips in place, and using a couple of rubber bands to hold everything together. You might be surprised how stable and easy to assemble this design is. I'll connect one of the batteries to the motor voltage input of the motor hat, whereas the other I'll use to power the Raspberry Pi by using the 5 volt on the ground pins of the Raspberry Pi that are broken out to the motor hat. Now that we have the hardware assembled, it's time to move on to the software side of things. As I showed on another video, I've configured the Raspbian operating system to run SSH, which allows me to connect remotely onto the Raspberry Pi from my laptop computer without the need of a monitor and a keyboard connected directly to the Pi. Once logged in, the first thing I want to do is test out the motor hat and see if I can control the motors. I'll create a couple of directories and download a Python library that allows the Raspberry Pi to communicate with the motor hat. The library includes a number of examples for controlling different kinds of motors. Before we're able to use them, we'll need to enable I2C communication for the Raspberry Pi. To do that, we'll use the Raspberry config menu and enable the I2C option. As a sanity check, we can run the I2C detect command to test that there are no problems in the communication between the Pi and the hat. If we see the 6F address show up, 
it means that everything is ready to go. In that case, we can open up the dctest.py script and make a few changes to run the two motors. If you're not familiar with the command line text editor VI, I recommend using something else like nano. You'll see that the address 6f is used in creating an instance of the Raspberry motor hat class. As I connected the two motors to the motor hat on channels 1 and 2, I'll remove 3 and 4 from the script. Also to ensure that my wiring is correct, I'll check that the left motor is connected to channel 1 and the right motor is connected to channel 2. With those changes in place, I'll open a new tab on my terminal create another SSH connection to Raspbian and use that to run my script. Before doing so, I'll prop the robot up so that it doesn't drive around while still connected to power. So now when I run the script, I need to keep an eye out for the motors running when they're supposed to and in the direction that I specified. If that looks good, we can now move on to adding a user interface so that we can drive the robot around using our mobile phones. I'm Karen Corbiel, host of The Learning Circuit, a show where we learn about electronic components and concepts, then apply what we learn by building projects. Look for new episodes of The Learning Circuit on Wednesdays and connect with me on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. In order to build a user interface for a robot, we're going to need two pieces of software. One, the server, which runs on the Raspberry Pi and another that will be sent from the Raspberry Pi onto clients like the browser running on our phones, which will include those graphical elements that are typically used in control interfaces. To save some time, I'll go to the GitHub repository of this project and download the software files. I'll use the command line utility git and then copy over the contents of the robotrc directory into the one we created earlier. I'll then create a Python script that I'll name robot underscore rc dot pi. For the server side of the project, we will be using a couple of Python modules. One is called Flask, which will allow us to run a web server, and another called Flask Socket IO, which gives Flask the ability to use web sockets. We will of course include the motor control module that we tested before and the built-in time module. I've covered the use of Flask and WebSockets in another video, so I'll spare you the nitty-gritty details in this one. The main things we'll need are an instance of the Flask class that we'll use as a parameter for creating an instance of the Socket.io class. The other piece is an instance of the Motor Control class so that we can actually control the movement of the motors. We'll use the Flask class to create routes so that clients can access our web server. For this demo, I'll just use a single route that will send a web page to the clients. Then I'll use the Socket.io class to listen to different messages that will be sent over a WebSocket connection. Those messages will include the speed and the direction that a user wants the robot to move. Once a specific message is received, we can use the motor control class to move the motors accordingly. The link to the code will be posted on the community page for this project. I encourage you to ask me any questions that you may have. With the Flask web server set up, we can move on to writing the web page that will be sent to the web clients. The web page will include some JavaScript code to send messages over a web socket. The JavaScript code will make use of a JavaScript socket IO library to create the web socket connection and send messages through it. In addition to the JavaScript code, the web page will include HTML elements so that the user can control the robot easily. 
I'll test out the basic functionality by using the web browser on my computer as the web client. I'll navigate to the IP address of the Pi using the port 5000. And if that seems to be working well, we can move on to tying everything up. We'll need four different buttons for each specific direction of movement. And we can even add a little slider to control the speed of the robot. I'll also add some basic styling so that it works well on mobile devices. With that done, I can grab on my iPhone, open up a web browser and access the same IP address I was using before and I'll be able to see the user interface. I can then finish up by shutting down Raspbian, disconnecting the power supply and switching the robot over to battery power. Now the real fun begins. I can use my phone to drive it around and even see if it works as a dog toy. If I don't have any typos in my code, I should be able to drive around the robot in any direction and at a range of speeds that I want. So there you have it. We've gone over the process of assembling a little do-it-yourself rover and we focus on the Python programming software to run the motors as well as the HTML and the JavaScript for building a user interface so that we can control it from our mobile devices. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work as a dog toy as I had hoped, but perhaps you'll find a better use for it. How about adding a video camera and streaming those images onto the web browser interface? Can you do that? If you have any questions, find the project page on the Element 14 community and let me know.